I'm Sir Tap Tap, and let's play Bleed 2. You can copy this game, once provided by the developer. So, if you haven't played Bleed, it's a twin stick uh, platformer shooter. It's maybe not what you think of when you think of twin stick, come to think of it. Uh, you'll see real quick. Um, just to point out the options here, um, you got a decent set of options. You got, you know, controller remapping. You got pretty much what you would expect from a 2D PC game. I guess you can turn off ducking. Ducking briefly dips audio levels. I didn't know you could duck. That's... What button do you press to duck? Oh, you probably just press down. Um, that's, a, that's a cute audio cue, though. Ducking briefly dips audio levels for dramatic effects. That's interesting. Oh, wait. Wait. Ducking. Wait. Is that... Is that the name of an audio effect, or does that mean that does that when it... What? Whatever. Let's just play the game. Uh, we we'll play it on hard. The Assault. So... Story of Bleed 1 is you became the greatest hero in the world, and that's that's really about it. We've got um, some indie game references over here. We've got Shitsumi, we've got uh, They Bleed Pixels, and we've got... Uh, don't know what that third one is, unfortunately. Everybody's all scared, but it's okay, because we're Ren, the greatest hero in the world. We, we officially won that title in the traditional way that that title is won, by fighting in a big frickin' arena for some reason. Uh, it's, it's normal. New Detroit! What a wonderful place! Yeah, if I was making, like, a new Space Age city, uh, I would definitely name it New Detroit. Okay, no, I think ducking. Yeah, I think that's when you slow time, I think it goes down a little bit. So yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no ducking. Anyway, what I mean by twin stick, if you didn't see my first video, I did play the original Bleed. I don't think I did a full playthrough. I'm gonna go ahead and do a full playthrough of this one. Um... It's not too long, so we just got introduced to a new mechanic there. What I mean by twin stick is left stick moves you around. Um, all of the buttons are on the top, you know, the top row buttons, the uh, shoulder buttons. Um, so you don't have to move your hands ever while playing, which is really... That's how most games should really strive to be, that you don't have to move your hands from a certain position. Unless it's, like, really important, and then it should be, like, pretty rare. Um... Right stick aims very specifically. You can use a mouse if you want. Um, I really do recommend a controller for this. Uh, I'm sure plenty of people play with a mouse, though. Um, it's just... It just feels very much meant for a controller. Um, there's different weapons. I don't have a ton. Uh, I really do recommend this very first... Uh, the defaults that we got here for now. I don't really have anything too interesting anyway. Uh, but in addition from the first game is that we now have the sword. So anything purple, we can um, reflect. There's also a taunt button now. I don't believe that was there before. You can taunt to uh, increase your... Oh, that's how you decrease your score multiplier. But you can taunt to increase your score multiplier. So anything that the bosses shoot that is purple, we can block out. Anything that is uh, yellow, we cannot. Nice colorblind friendly uh, effects there, by the way. Um, purple and yellow, pretty much, I don't think there, I'm not sure if there's any color blindness that really messes those two up. Well, I mean, monochromia might maybe, because, you know, but, um, they're also kind of, like, inverted, like, uh, the yellow is darker towards the middle, so that's a really nice touch. Um, red-green color blindness is the, ver the most common kind, so that's definitely covered by that. So I forget if you can see the score multiplier. It's been a while since I played Bleed 1. Um, this feels very much like you would expect Bleed 2 to feel like. I have beaten the game before, I'll say that. Um, I'll try not to spoil too much, which is why I erased my save data. I, uh, I wasn't too afraid of doing that though, because ow. It's pretty quick to get your progress back. I didn't really play super long either. I didn't, you know, get the craziest unlocks, but... I think all unlocks you get from the story mode, and there's continues in the story mode, I think it's more forgiving than Bleed 1 was in terms of story mode stuff. Like, if I die on this boss, I will continue from this boss, not the start of the level. I don't think Bleed 1 was like that, but I don't... Aside from that one level, I don't think... Did Bleed 1 have multiple bosses per level? This one's more of a... It's more boss rush than the previous game, and... Maybe a bit less platformer, but there's still there's still platforming in there. Uh, I really do like the sword. It matches really well with the time slow. 
Because now, instead of just dodging with time slow, you can, uh... Oops, that was bad. I can't reflect that one. Because yeah, anything that's orange, I'm not able to reflect. You can spam taunts. I think spamming taunts makes them less effective. I'm not 100% sure how the taunt works. If you, The first time you taunt, it gives you a good bonus to the style multiplier. Um, see, not too horrible. And the levels have nice little transitions here. Breaking news! The enemy arrived without warning, carving a trail of darkness and despair across the globe. For days, we called for our hero for help. Some even began to lose hope. But Ren... Rin? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think Rin. The greatest hero of all time. Hey, I wasn't done reading that. At last, our enemy is forced to flee. At last, they hold fear in their hearts. But fear is not enough, and Ren is in pursuit. We'll keep you updated through every moment of this action. Stay tuned! Thanks, Mr. Flower Man. Some nice pixels in this game, too, by the way. I, I, I tend to forget to mention things like like the visuals and the music, but they really do add to it, of course. You know, always, but... Uh, so these cats are up to no good. These are... There's lots of callbacks to the first game, too. Um, these cats were in the first game, right? And the, the little fly dudes definitely were. Like I said, it, it's been a couple years, I think, now? Uh, since I played the first one. Uh, it feels like too long, but... Uh, I picked this one right up, and... Uh, it's very accessible. I, I would say it's more accessible, if not necessarily easier, than the first one. I think arcade mode would actually be a lot harder, because there's a lot more bosses. And I would say overall I died more in this game than the first game, but because of the continues, um, I never really got stuck. Uh-oh, those... Yeah, can't block those. So usually when you deflect something at a boss, it will do significantly more damage than your normal attacks. Um, not like the normal pot shots, but like anytime there's like a dramatic pause and the boss fires off a big shot at you and it's purple If you reflect that back, you know as you might expect that'll do quite a lot of damage and or disrupt their pattern or whatever And let you do some more damage on your own It works really well with the time slow and it's kind of It almost makes me wonder why they ever had time slow without it out You have you have basically a quadruple jump you have one normal jump and three air dashes is how it really works. The game calls it a triple jump. It's not really how I would describe it. Anyway, here's some jackbutt that I'm sure nobody remembers. Uh, why would you remember this guy? I don't even know who this is. Who is he? This is just some blonde guy. Uh-oh. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, so anytime you see a big flash and purple, that's when you're going to need to block with your sword. Also, the time slow is interesting. If you completely deplete your meter, you um, you can't use it until it recharges. Otherwise, you can use it at any distance. So you basically just really want to avoid um, completely depleting your meter if you can avoid it. Oh, and we're S rank. Unfortunately, with a current health, there's no way to regain health. I don't believe. Well, not with not with Rin. Spoilers. Um, so yeah, we're, we're pretty likely to die before the very end of this level. Because uh, there's a couple more bosses left, I believe. Oh! The pitch distorted laugh. Could this be the final boss? Also, I really love how smooth the levels flow. I honestly forget when I've beaten a level sometimes. Like, it does show the, the progress, the, you know, level cleared thing. But it's just so smooth. What's this? Oh! Oh, hey, it's the blonde guy. I don't think he actually has a name, by the way. The, l later on, there's a thing where... Uh oh Huh? Hey! Oh, frick. It's not supposed to happen like that. I like the little messages you get. Um, when you do get a game over, uh, it has little encouraging messages. That, um, that actually vary by character. I forget if the first game had multiple characters, but yes, you unlock characters in this game. That's pretty great. Uh, you also unlock more loadouts, as we saw before. We don't... I think there used to be a shop or something for loadouts, 
or weapons in the first game. But uh, now they're just unlocks for beating the game. No silliness. I could be a little wrong, like I said. It's been a while since I played. I should replay the first one. I should. Oh, there we go. Oh. The sad thing is, I totally could have beaten her without taking that. If I just didn't mess up that parry. And yeah, that was the end of the level. Oh well. We had to die sometime. But yeah, the, the game is really balanced well. If you think it's a little too easy, the thing is, there's an arcade mode. We have one life. And it's balanced. It feels like it was really balanced around that. And, you know, story mode is kind of the easy mode, so to speak. So it makes it really accessible and enjoyable and not frustrating, in my opinion. Uh, hold on here. Something she may have eventually propelled, if not for that blonde guy's assistant. I like how no one knows who the blonde guy is. Why is he helping Ren? Is it a desperate bid for redemption? Well, nothing can ever do. He can ever do will make up for the world. Forgive him. Nothing! Regardless, they seem to have joined forces and pursued the enemy into the sky. Don't touch that dial! Has anybody in the audience actually used a dial on their TV? I don't think I've ever owned a TV with a dial. I owned... Um, well, I owned. My parents owned some pretty old, big old CRTs. I need to get a CRT, by the way. I um, actually got an N64, and I've been meaning to collect some other retro stuff. I gave away my retro consoles because they didn't they didn't used to be worth anything, and now like what I gave away like is surely worth several hundred or like maybe over a thousand bucks. It was worth like chump change at a thrift market at the time. It really sucks. The the prices have really gone through the roof, and it's partly because, you know, people want that stuff, and partly just because, you know, with the internet, people, like, you know, it's not just, like, grandma at the, um, at a, uh, yard sale anymore. It's, like, people that realize, oh, there's a need for this, so I'll just raise my prices, like, 500% or more. And, I mean... I don't think retro consoles are worthless or anything, but it's it's frustrating. But that doesn't matter, because this is Bleed 2, and you can play it on your home computer entertainment system. Yeah. I'm not sure if this... Did Bleed 1 ever get console released? This is like... In the current day and age, I kind of expect slash hope any good indie game will end up on console, if at all possible. And I mean, this would totally play well on console. I've, I've never played this game without a controller. So, see you, Space Cowboy. Um, yeah. But I'll, I'll have to double check that. I, I just kind of... I saw that Bleed 2 was coming out. Uh, I said hey to the developer on Twitter. I follow... Uh, I follow lots and lots of developers. And, uh, you know, this is a review... I said that, right? Yeah. Um, and I wanted to check it out. I'm checking it out. And yeah, it's kind of frustrating being embargoed. I mean, obviously this will come out once all that's passed, but like I've been playing this a lot and it's like, oh, I can't talk about the cool thing I'm playing. Oh, Sninja's a bit annoying. Ah, there it is. Because that attack can't be parried. Ah, what the? Oh, I'm out of time slow. That's a problem. No. Yeah, I'm really bad with the ninja. <laughs> Guess that's why they call it hard mode. I didn't realize the quotes changed by um, by which mode you're playing. They change by character, I know that much. Uh, the characters are pretty cool, by the way. They, um, they are not just cosmetic. It's actually really cool. And some of the characters are really hard to use. And there's a mix of, like, risk-reward and... I think the first one you unlock, she just seems really freaking hard to use. I won't spoil it, because it's really cool. Um, how dare you have a second form. The thing with this guy is you can... If you're willing to lose some score for time, you can just make him dawdle by shooting at him, because he does this blocking thing, and you can get your time back. It's usually not really worth it to do that unless you're having a lot of trouble with him. But, uh, it's there. And yeah, you really just have to wait for him to draw his sword again to uh, hit him. It's really the only trick to that. Bye-bye. He doesn't have a head under that, by the way. Look at that. And now he doesn't have a body. 
And optimal strats. I hope there's a way to mute that taunt sound because I think optimal scoring strategy would just be to constantly taunt anytime that your meter isn't full. So I mean, anyone that like really is going for score probably doesn't need to taunt all that much because they shouldn't be getting hit too often. But if you're like a scrub but also really want to care about score, which isn't a really good way to be, in my opinion, uh, you, you would end up like taunting a lot. I recommend not really caring too much about score. Like, this is the sort of game you want to just play it to beat it the first time, then you want to try maybe a one credit clear, then you worry about score, or like individual level score before arcade mode at the very least. Because it does track score by, per level. Also, be very grateful these aren't like, you know, oh, oh, right, that's the boss. That's not. Oof. Be grateful these aren't the kind of missiles that explode when you touch them. I really like the tells on the bosses. I don't think... Aw, oh, frick. You pushed the wrong button? Okay, so when you play on easier mode... Uh, that makes sense. Because I played on... Oh, oh right. Yeah. Like I said, whenever you can, you really want to reflect things. Um, what was I saying? Ow, ow. Hello. Completely forget my idea now. Um, yeah, on easier difficulties, it does, it gives you more encouraging stuff, which that's a nice touch. I completely forget what I ever thought I was talking about. That, 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 it happens sometimes. Also, you can change weapons, and I don't really find the default weapons, other than this one, to be that good. The, let's take a look, quick look here. Uh, pistols? I don't... What do you mean? Press Alt-Fire. Wait, what even is Alt-Fire? Oh! I forgot Alt-Fire is a thing. Bye-bye. That's a cameo, by the way. That's Rex Rocket. It's a game I tried to play, but it's like... A really long Metroidvania with a live system? And you can get game overs? And... That just seemed like a horrible idea, and... And it wasn't, like, an easy one. And it's like... I, I, in my opinion, game overs really shouldn't be a thing unless it's like a, a different mode or something. Are you going for a roguelike? I don't even like game overs and roguelikes. Like, I, I like an arcade mode sort of thing. Like, where you just let- it lets you continue. Even that blonde guy proved his worth, paying the ultimate price to assist our champion! Perhaps he was misjudged. History will never forget the brave sacrifice of whatever his name was. And now our hero must boss board the warship and take it down alone. But you won't be truly alone if we continue to watch and believe. Contribute to her spirit bomb. The launch. Alright. We're at about 20 minutes, so we're going to continue this uh, next video. And it'll probably just be one or two more videos. Uh, it's not super long. It's the sort of game you're supposed to play, you know, arcade style. You're supposed to play like, okay, I beat the game on normal mode in story mode, so I'm gonna play it on, you know, normal arcade mode, now I'm gonna play it on, like, hard arcade mode, you know, it's, you know, it's a replayable game, you play with different characters and stuff. Isn't that right, Parker? Are you here to disrupt me? Yes, you are, hello! Ah. Mouse, please, escape. <laughs>